the turkey, the crowning glory of the Thanksgiving table. These particular turkeys call Frey's family farm near New Bothwell home. For now, Sandra Frey's and her family have been raising both chickens and free-range turkeys for the past couple of decades. These birds are destined for Thanksgiving feasts here in the Southeast. 19 years ago, when we first started this, uh, before we actually had um, our first Thanksgiving turkey on the uh, table, we had a, a friend who'd come over, and she was a single woman, and uh, she said, I want one of those free-range turkeys. And I'm thinking, that's strange. You're a single woman. Why would you like that? And she said, there is nothing like a free-range bird and the meat is juicier and I just thought really okay because I've always known turkey meat white turkey meat to be very dry right and so we had our first homegrown turkey and she's right it's phenomenally juicy and I don't understand exactly why is it the fresh air is it they peck the ground what are the details I've never done enough research but you know what maybe it is just that good old-fashioned exercise and doing it God's way you know Sandra says she quite enjoys raising turkeys, given that they have such a personality. Turkeys are social. They talk to you when you talk to them, and they um, come to greet you, whereas a chicken says, oh, it's you, and walks away. Probably more curious about the food and the things that you're bringing, rather than uh, actually you, but that's okay. It doesn't feel that way. Not many would care to view an animal destined for the holiday table as being a social creature. Do Sandra's customers find that sentiment a bit odd? <laughs> yes, I'm sure they do. But you know what? Until you have been with a turkey uh, or turkeys, and it has to be a family of turkeys because they actually sing together. And um, when a noise is made, they all respond in a chorus back to you. And apparently singing in unison isn't their only talent. The, the turkeys strut, the male turkeys strut, and put on quite a show and um, are pretty male dominant. You, they can really do a good fight. And there's females in the herd and they do realize that uh, uh, the dominance is in the male. Other than their desire to show off, is there really any other difference in gender when it comes to the bird that you'll serve as part of your Thanksgiving feast? The biggest difference you'll see between a male and a female is the weight of the bird. Uh, tender meat is the same on both birds. You just get a bigger male bird, which is a tom, and of course the, the female is a hen. It's easy to see just how much of an affinity Sandra has for these creatures that take center stage around the holidays. But how does she deal with the fact that her beloved birds eventually end up in a roasting pan in somebody's oven. Well, number one, don't name the animal so that it doesn't become your friend. Just see it as um, a pastime, an enjoyment. It's sort of like planting your flowers. You plant them in the spring, you enjoy them all, all summer, but then at the end you kind of say goodbye. And um, that is what you do with the animals. You, you always remember that you're the guardian or the caregiver, knowing that there is a greater purpose. And that is Thanksgiving dinner. Everyone loves a free range turkey. Will all of Sandra's birds end up on the table this Thanksgiving weekend? If not Thanksgiving, they've planned it for Christmas. Sandra has built up quite a successful business raising these birds, but the benefits extend much further than simply financial profit. You know, raising the chickens and the turkeys grew from a personal need of having good tasting and good quality meat to having opportunities for our children to grow and to develop good work ethics and to face life. Because life is living, and sadly, when uh, mortality happens, we need to face those end results as well. And so we've given our children an opportunity to, um, to have all that experience. For Steinbeck Online, I'm Karen Black.